Y'all ain't allowed to sing that song before I preach because when I sing too loud before I preach, then I lose my voice in the middle of my sermon. <laughs> and I like that song so much, I, wanna, I just can't help myself. And then I start singing and I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna pay for this about 10 minutes in. All right, I got, my, I got my water though in case I mess up. There we go. Set my timer so I don't go too long and Michelle doesn't start dancing up there in the booth. Amen. I'm ready. I'm ready to roll now. You ready? Harold yeah. Carmen's always ready. That brother's always ready to go. We're going to talk about prayer today. Amen? Amen. We're talking about practicing the way of Jesus. You can't talk about practicing the way of Jesus, being an apprentice to Jesus, unless you talk about prayer, right? And so that's one of the things we're talking about. Today is week one. Next week is week two. And there's a special guest speaker next week. Hmm. Tom, should I tell him or are we trying to build the suspense? I can tell him. Tom McGurk from Paris, France is coming to speak the word. Amen. There we go. So he's coming next week. Uh, so if you don't like it this week and you're visiting, come back next week. You'll like that guy more anyway. It'll be awesome. Uh, so we're talking about practicing the way. So let's, you know, let's just, let's take a moment. Let's gather ourselves spiritually. Remember the songs that we have sung. Every praise is due our God, right? He's awesome, deliverer, protector, provider, all these great things. What a wonderful, powerful name, right, Jesus has, right? Let's just pray to him right now. Father, we just come to you in prayer. We want to just absorb everything we've experienced, even if it was a hug, if it was a conversation before church started, this, you know, if, if it's something that has been sung, prayed, a picture that we saw that warmed our heart. I just pray that we can all see this as worship, that we can all come together and express our devotion to you. Father, use this time, please. Use this time to encourage us, challenge us, inspire us, delight us. Whatever we need, Lord, you are the great provider. You know what our hearts need. But ultimately, whatever we do, Lord, I pray that we don't just come to be entertained and come just to get some spiritual nuggets so we can sound smart to somebody else. I pray that whenever we come here, that we surrender to you and allow your Holy Spirit to transform us from within, not because of any eloquence I have or don't have or whatever the speaker is, but because of who you are, what you want for our lives, and the power of your spirit, the power of your word, and the power when we come together. Please use this time. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so I've been told that I'm a laid back kind of guy. Okay, that's my personality. That's what I've been told, laid back. Um, I grew up as an only child. Uh, my mom, hardworking woman, right? Sometimes working multiple jobs. I mean, just trying to make it happen. Much respect, right? But, I mean, you just do the math. I'm an only child. Mom's got to work a lot. I spend a lot of time alone, right, by myself. It's just wh whatever. I'm not, I'm not a victim. I'm just giving you the... So I didn't have to talk to nobody. <laughs> Sometimes I just had a lot of time to myself. And you know what? After a while, I kind of liked it. <laughs> got used to it. Didn't even realize how much I liked being by myself and not talking much until I got married. And I realized that this here woman the Lord gave me, she has a different threshold of what it means to talk enough than I do. And we had some interesting interactions, especially early on in our marriage, when she was just crying out for more of just connection. And she would start calling me like, bro, you, you, you flatline. That's you. That's your, you're just flatline. Beep. That's who you are. <laughs> right? And so we would just have these challenges. And, uh, and I'm telling you this because I think with prayer, sometimes I think some of us get stuck. And, our, and the way we are, oh, here's that sermon about prayer. I know I'm not praying enough. And now I'm going to leave here feeling guilty. And Jeff's going to load me down with 10 things to do. And now I'm going to feel worse about myself after I leave. And some of us can feel that way. My personality, I honestly started getting a little funky with prayer. And I'm the minister, right? And I started to see that, you know, honestly, I have a way that I process the world that may be different from you. Just like it was different from my wife. 
But the beauty is over time, we've been married 21 years now, I actually see the way she processes the world and I appreciate it more. And I've actually learned and incorporated that into my worldview and how I view the world. And it helps me. It, it, it not only helps me be more compassionate to her, but it, genu it genuinely has helped me to respond to things differently than maybe I would have. And I think that's beautiful and that's great. But I had to get humbled, you know, and, and it was not an easy process. Um, but I'm grateful for it. I think with prayer, I think some of us, we get stuck and we, no matter what your personality type, at some point, I think you get stuck for whatever the reason may be. You know, and I got to a place where it, I mean, I went into the ministry very early in my spirit, my walk with Jesus. So I'm, I'm still trying to be an apprentice to Jesus, just me. And then all of a sudden I'm the minister. Like, I'm like, oh man. And so my prayer time became not only time for me, but I got to pray. If, if I don't pray for the people, I'm a sinner. What do I pray for? The, I don't know. Think of something. You got to say something. Pray. I'm praying for people. I got a list of this ministry I want to pray through. Uh, well, that guy at that church, his church is doing awesome. Well, what is he doing? Let me pray like he prays and let me do it like this. And then all of a sudden, every morning I wake up, I'm like, you know, the quiet time became like intimidating and, and like, I don't know if I was really looking forward to some aspects of spending that time with God. And, uh, and you, you multiply that over decades, it can get a little weird with the prayer thing, okay? Um, and so I just want to encourage you, there's always, God is always available to connect with us. And I think some of us, like me, had reduced prayer to something that I do in the morning as a part of my quiet time, right? That's still good. Please keep doing that, okay? That's not bad. But what I'm saying is prayer is more than that. But, but in practice, that's where many of us are. I know because I get with some of you and you tell me that, and I've experienced it myself, that prayer is something a good disciple, apprentice of Jesus does in the morning, right, before they start their day. And what is prayer? It's a conversation with God. It's communicating with God. The challenge for many of us is it's often a monologue, and it's not really a conversation. There's not really a two-way thing going. It's more of a one-way thing. So you're relegating this thing called prayer, which is something to do at one part of your day so you can be a good Christian, because that's what Jesus did. Amen, and I'm with you, and we need to keep praying. But it's the one way you don't stop to hear, to listen, Maybe God's trying to respond to you, but you don't take the time to do that. And you call that prayer, right? And I'm, what I'm saying to you is if that's what you're doing, at some point it's going to break down. At some point. And maybe it already has. And you got a little bit of, you know, spiritual zombie stuff going on right now because you're just going through the motions and it's, and it's, it's challenging. Now for me, yeah, it got to an existential problem. Like I genuinely was telling people like, I don't know, something's wrong. Like I, I'm burning out. I don't know. I got to, I got to switch something up. And, and if you've heard me over the last few years, you've heard me share about some of the things that I've tried to do to listen <laughs> to God and not just sit there and talk to him the whole time and feel the pressure. Am I praying the right thing for this person and that person and this list that I have to pray for? And ought and have to and ought. If that's what the words you use to describe prayer a lot, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And I want to free you from that. All right? I want to free you from that. And so today, yes, we're going to look at Jesus' way of life. You know, I think this thing works. You know, I'm going to share some of the obvious passages. I call them the obvious. If you've been around the Bible, you're probably familiar with these. We could go through Luke, Mark, whatever, John, and there's a lot of stuff in there. But just look at, this is just the obvious way of life for Jesus. If you want to be his apprentice, you need to follow him, right? In Luke 5, 16, Jesus often, say that with me, often. He often withdrew to lonely places and prayed, okay? Again, this is a practice of Jesus. Luke 6, 12, one of these days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. Spent the night praying to God. Jeff, I don't have time for that. Jeff, I have a high-powered job. I know. I got kids. I know. But this is what Jesus, these are some of the things he did. Okay, I'm just, just giving it to you, right? Luke 6, 28, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. 
That's not easy for many of us. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, seems like a paradox, but you work it out. He asked them, who do the crowd say I am? So there's this concept of even Jesus can be with people, but even kind of have moments where he's still in prayer. It wasn't this relegated thing for Jesus that he just did at one part of his day. Prayer is life. Your life should be a prayer to God in many respects. Prayer is what God has given us as a way to experience life with him. Not just a time for you to rattle off the stuff you really want to see happen in your life or somebody else's. It's a way to experience life with God. About eight days later, Jesus said he took Peter, James, and John with him, went up on a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. As he was praying, then the transformation for Jesus, right? His clothes became bright as a flash of lightning. As he was praying, that's when that happened. That transformation happens in prayer. Powerful. Uh, and he had guys with him this time. So, some t- so that's the beautiful thing of the Bible. There's no one way to pray. Like, it has to be on a mountainside. No, I'm not saying that. It has to be early in the morning. No, I'm not saying that. It's not one place. It's not these are the exact words you have to say every single time. Although the Lord's Prayer is a great pattern to pray. We've given that sermon multiple times before, and you can look it up online. This morning is not the sermon how to pray through the Lord's Prayer, which is a great practice, and I recommend it for a season of your life to walk with God with. It's beautiful and it's powerful, and Jesus did it. And very early in the morning, you remember that? That was the one that got me when I was a brand new Christian. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and went and prayed, right? And that was one that was kind of, you know, in a good heart drilled into me. I, I, res- I appreciated it. But I heard that a lot. If you want to be a good Christian, you get up in the morning. You pray to God early. Amen. And I, I appreciate it, and I still do it. But the difference is I have a different mindset now because I've gone through a lot of challenges. One of the passages that has helped me view prayer differently, in fact, view all of the spiritual disciplines differently, one of the passages that has helped me a lot is one that many of us, again, are familiar with, is in John 15. This has helped me just get all, whether it's fasting, whether it's praying, whatever it may be, the concepts in this passage that Jesus is getting at have helped me specifically with prayer as well. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it will bear more fruit. You are clean already because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me. Say that with me. Remain in me. Who is Jesus? Jesus is saying that, right? He's saying remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I'm the vine. You're the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. And the the concepts in this passage have helped me deeply to appreciate what prayer, I believe, can be all about. It is a practical way to remain in Jesus. And and, uh, many of us, I've read so many different books and I've shared them, but Sacred Rhythms is a great book. Soul Feast, wonderful book. Invitation to a Journey, great book. Uh, John Mark Comer, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, great book, right? And in that book, he talks about this passage as well, and he talks about what he calls the trellis, right, or kind of the structure kind of around the, the vines. In other words, if you just leave some, some vines out there and the grapes start growing, if you don't have the structure that they can hang on and be pruned from, then they're just going to die. And you'll never get, you'll never get that great 
glass of old Vine Zinfandel or Cabernet that you really want. <laughs> if, no, if no gardener comes to snip some here, to let the sunlight get in there so that the air can go through and make you get, you know, if, if there's no gardener doing that and there's no trellis, if there's no structure so that those, those vines can hang on and go around, if there's no structure there, you don't get the fruit. It's not going to happen. And what I'm saying to you is I believe in so many ways that these spiritual disciplines, like praying, and it's, it's, it's a way to give your life some structure so that the fruit can, can be born in your life. And it's a beautiful image, you know, that it's like the Holy Spirit is like the, is coming through the vine and the branches to burst out into the fruit. But it needs that structure. And some of us don't have that structure in our lives because we're addicted to being distracted. You are flat out, man. All of us are distracted. I think that's one of our biggest cultural challenges right now. And you know how it is. We can look at our culture and we can go, oh, man, <coughs> excuse me, if you're over 40 and you watch TV, I know you. You're like me. You're like, you're watching some show and you go, whoa, did they say that? Isn't this CBS? <laughs> you can say that on network TV now? Like, wow, this commercial, what are they wearing? Oh, my gosh, that's a regular commercial. You know what I mean? Like, this is just regular TV. Like, you just go, wow, how did we get here? You know what I mean? Like, wow, how or, you know, you look at politics and the lack of decorum and civility, you know, and you just go, man, what happened? Like, how did we get, like, how did we get to this point? Like, man, I remember back in the day, it wasn't this bad. How did we get here? You know, and one of the books I read says that the average person touches their iPhone over 2,000 times a day. How did we get here? You know how you are. Something's going on in your life, whatever. There's a gap in the time. Like, you can't even accept a gap in time. You're addicted to distract, being distracted. And that absolutely affects remaining in him. They are absolutely connected. You will not remain in him if every moment you have that quite possibly could be a moment to engage with God or something. Or he often withdrew. He could even be with people. He's walking with his disciples, but they said somehow he still prayed. To... But no, we, we'd have a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. See what happens when I sing that song? <laughs> Andrew Hare, it's all your fault. <coughs> but uh, distractedness, man. I think we got to deal with that. I'm going to give you a practice today because that's the kind of the, what this is all kind of gearing towards. I'm going to give you a spiritual practice. It might not be for you or whatever, but I'm telling you, I've been, I'm, I've been practicing this for a few months. Okay, so I've been doing it in my own life, and it has helped me. You may not get it. You may not like it. It may not help you the first time you tried. I get, it didn't help me the first few times I tried it. That's why we call it practice. Because that video game that you all good at now, you weren't good at the first time you played it <laughs> on your phone, but you somehow kept at it. You remained in the game, and now you're good. <laughs> now you're good. Don't be a, you know, you, you have the capacity. You were actually born for this capacity. But you've been distracted and forgotten who you are. Remain in me. It's not about something you do in the morning and then go off and just try to be a good Christian. Your life as prayer. Taking the time throughout the day. I'm going to share with you something that has been shared for 400, 500 years. It's a practice. If you try it a lot, I think you'll get good at it. <laughs> it's something called the examine. And it's kind of like the spiritual trellis, right? This gives you a little structure. There's steps to it. I've read, a, and there's no one way to do it. There's different ways. I've tried to mesh all the different stuff I've read into something I think works. <clears throat> the first thing you do before you start, the big picture is you're going to examine your last 24 hours. That's the big picture. You're going to take, you're going to take some time to examine your last 24 hours. Some people do this at night. And they look, you know, they look back over their last, the, the day. Basically, they woke up this morning, they go through the day. 
my brain doesn't work that great at night. I'm kind of done at night to do something like this. So it works great for me in the morning, <laughs> and I look back over the previous day. That's me. Again, different. we're different. Some of us are different. That's how I do it. So before I start examining the day, the first thing you do is you take a moment and you think about how much God loves you. Just think about it. Lean into it. How much God loves you. And I also think the Lord's Prayer, when he said pray, when you pray, say, Father. I think somewhere in there, there's this concept of it's relational. Just remember the love, the care, how much God loves you. Second step, <clears throat> ask God for light, spiritual light, that wisdom, that insight that he provides. You know, seek me, search me, you know, right? The Holy Spirit, ask the Spirit to be the guide, you know, not you. It's like you're getting on the roller coaster, man. You just, and they, they put the thing down. You ain't, you ain't controlling nothing, right? You just let the Spirit take you. And don't just use your own insights. And Psalm 39 is a great uh, passage. You know, and, and this is praying. So you're asking God for this light. You're praying to him. I, I want this time to be a work of yours, not mine. I, I want this, to, this examine to be something that's fruitful, just beyond what I can do as a human and the next thing you do is you give thanks. You look over the last 24 hours, and you just, did, did you feel like a blessing from God at any point or just a, or anything, just a, just a, a good thing happened? I mean, it could be anything. And, you, and it's cool to just tell God that, remember it, and just thank God. Thank God. And you go, Jeff, where's the meat, dude? Come on, give me the, give me the spiritual stuff, bro. This is all this, man, thanking God. I'm telling you. <laughs> One of the books I read, he said, some of you need to spend time just doing these steps before you even, don't, don't even do an ex examine your last 24 hours. Doing this alone is helpful. Remembering God loves you, <laughs> asking God to search you, and giving him thanks for the blessings in your life. Just that alone can be very, very helpful and instructive. But that's not the end. So after you give thanks and you remember the blessing of the day, here's what you can do. You review your last 24 hours. <coughs> Excuse me. You're looking for the stirrings in your heart. Did God, did, is there any moment of the day where you felt like there was some spiritual really going on? You know, did, was God stirring you or moving in you? Um, what did you feel was from God and, and what was not from God that you felt, right, during the day? And, and how did you respond to it? How did you respond, right? Um, when I did this, you know what I learned about myself after a few days in a row? When I was doing this and I was doing good and I was practicing it, I learned that I got easily annoyed. Of some, I, I, if, I, if I hadn't really taken the time to examine every day, I realized in the specific examples were, if I was, especially if I was doing something, especially if I was like at my computer or something, and one of my kids or my wife, hey, Jeff, can I would be so like offended. Like, dude, don't you see what I'm doing? Like, I wouldn't say that, but everything in me was like, why are you interrupting me? Like, I'm trying to be efficient and effective in my life, and you just, you just read the room. Don't you see that I'm doing something? <laughs> like, that was in my spirit, right? I didn't, I didn't say that stuff, but I, I you know, I, I was giving off the vibe sometimes, I'm sure, with some body language, probably. You know what I mean? Like, man, dang, what? Yeah, what? Okay, you know. So, but man, that was in me. But the examine helped me to see it because I saw it one day and then I saw, I, man, I did that too. Okay, I got, ooh, ooh, ooh. This is in me. This is who I am right now. And then you think of all that happened in your day. What did you respond most strongly to? And it could be, it could be delight. It could be joy. It could be confusion, hopelessness, sadness, anger, whatever. But just in, that, in these last 24 hours that you just lived, yeah, what was what you respond strongly to? And then you lean into that experience. That's the land the plane timer. There we go. Good, because I'm almost done. <clears throat> and, and when you lean into it, you try, to, you try to hear God saying, I'd like to be with you in that reaction that you had. Let's talk to me about it. Conversation. Communion. Two-way. Why'd you respond? What were you feeling? What's going on? Do you want to be transformed? Do you want to get well? 
What passages come to mind? Spirit, help me with passages. Stuff like that. Just, but this, is, this, is, this isn't just praying through lists, which are not bad, but this is what I needed or else I was going to go crazy. And so after you have this experience, then you face your shortcomings and your sins. And you know what? You ask God for forgiveness. And this was the thing that totally hit me that I was not expecting. And, it, and I don't know if it was the easy, easily annoyed thing or if it was something else. But it was some sin that I, and I, was, and I was facing it and trying to ask for forgiveness. And it hit me like, God loves me. Because I had done that at the beginning. And so I'm dealing with my sin, but instead of feeling guilty, instead of feeling shame, I actually felt, because God still loves me, like I can change. Like he's just, he's just helping me to grow. He, and he's going to do the work in me that I can't do myself because I'm, I can't do it on my own. Accomplishing, I can't accomplish anything on my own. So he's going to change me from within, and I'm just giving it to him. And yeah, I'm not happy I did it, but I asked for forgiveness, and I felt so, I, the repentance thing was real in that moment. Like I, you could have taught me, you could turn a passage on repentance and all that 10 times, but that moment, never had it before like that. And I believe that's the moment when you can pray the lead me in the way everlasting type stuff. You know, please, Spirit. Psalm 139 again. And after this, you look forward to the day to come. You know, you, you say, okay, God, you, you just looked at this last day and you thank God, right? I mean, you already thanked him because to live a day is a gift. <laughs> Amen. You just had a day and now you got another one. But now you might have learned some stuff from the other day. And now God, God, Emmanuel, God with us. Why we only talk about that during Christmas? What in the world is wrong with us? Emmanuel, God with us. That means right now. I mean, the breath you just took, you wouldn't have taken it if it weren't God with you. He's closer to you than the breath you just took. He's with you. But sometimes we, we act like we walk through our life like he's not even... So, no, after the exam, you're like, this next 24 hours, me and you, I'm remaining in you. And let me tell you what I've learned. Over time, what happens is as I'm going through my day, I'm telling you something might happen. And I'm just, how did I respond to that? And guess what I start doing? I'm praying. There's, it's just spontaneous. Like, oh, okay. All right. That was not good. That was, oh, that, oh man, that was great. Thanks, God. That was... I appreciate that. I give, you know, I give him thanks even in that moment. So prayer is life, not something I do. Because if it's just something I do and I ought and I should, after a while, I'm done. And I'm done. And I don't want to be like that. So <clears throat> that's a spiritual practice. I hope if it helps you, amen. If it doesn't, the guy next week might give you another one and that might help you. Amen. You know what I mean? So let's go to God in prayer and we'll take the Lord's Supper together. Amen. <laughs> Oh, Father. Oh. Oh, God. So grateful for you. Mm. Oh, so need you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Thank you for the word that you've given us that shines light and gives us the path that we can walk on. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For loving people, having compassion, staying on that cross. Oh, thank you for so much love you shower on us. And we are going to, together, we're going to take ah, the bread that represents the body of Jesus. We are going to drink this juice that represents the blood that he shed. And we're going to remember, remember Jesus. We're doing this in remembrance of him. And we're doing this, taking this into our physical bodies as we proclaim this with Christians all over the world that we believe, Father, you are going to send Jesus back. We proclaim that. We revel in that. We praise you for that and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.